the beautiful Tampa Bay area has been a hotbed for sporting success of late. And that theme's going to continue today here at the final race of the 2020 season for the NTT IndyCar Series. This is the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg here in Florida. Boy, there have been some great victories, some big wins, and one of these two guys is going to go away today as an IndyCar champion. Will it be Joseph Newgarden there, who is some 32 points down behind this man, Scott Dixon, already a five-time champion? He's trying to emulate something that the great A.J. Foyt did 45 years ago, that is winning a sixth championship. Hi, folks. Welcome to NBC's coverage of this race, which is so important in the big scheme of things. Lee Diffie along with Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, Marty Snyder and Kevin Lee, we're ready to go. This is one of the most physically demanding tracks on the calendar and it's an 87 degree day and you check out the Firestone starting grid. Will Power picked up his 62nd career pole yesterday. An amazing performance. That's his fifth pole of this year. He starts alongside Alexander Rossi. Colton Herter and James Hinchcliffe there. Jack Harvey, an outstanding qualifying in fifth alongside the youngster Pato O'Ward. First of the championship contenders you see there is Newgarden back on the fourth row alongside St. Petersburg's own Sebastian Bourdais, a four-time series champion, making his return full-time next year. And there is the other title contender. Scott Dixon starting on the sixth row alongside Team Penske's Simon Pagano, who is, of course, the teammate to Joseph Newgarden. So we'll let that Firestone starting grid roll all the way through so you can get to see all 24 drivers in this field. So what's at stake today? You know that there's a championship at stake. For the 15th consecutive year, this title will be decided on the final opportunity. And there's a little tale of the tape, if you like. Most important thing is that Dixon leads by 30 two points. There are some 54 points up for grabs on an IndyCar weekend, on an IndyCar race. And one of those points, the bonus point for pole, has already gone. So there's 53 points up for grabs for Joseph Newgarden. It's possible. He's got to be up there in those top two positions, though. We'll talk more about that throughout the course of the race. Both drivers, of course, will be carrying our onboard cameras, so we won't miss a thing with the title contenders. One Honda driver, one Chevrolet driver. Two of the powerhouse teams represented. Chip Ganassi racing for Dixon on the left. Team Penske for Roger Penske, the series owner and the new owner of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the right. So, boy, this is going to be a tough examination today physically for these drivers. It is so humid. The heat index is at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The GMR track facts, and there's a very interesting one at the bottom there on the left. Scott Dixon has never been victorious at this racetrack. Could he change that today and just cement that sixth title? We are not too far from finding out. 100 laps is the duration of today's race. And not only is there the overall championship to be decided, but as soon as the green flag flies, this young man here, the 20 year old, from the Netherlands, Renus VK, who has wowed us on more than one occasion this year. For Ed Carpenter Racing, the driver of the Sonax Chevrolet, he will be crowned the Rookie of the Year in the 2020 NTT IndyCar Series. So the cars are coming to green. We're getting ready to roll. 100 laps around here on a hot, humid day in Florida. And this is quite atypical for the IndyCar Series to run this late into the year, especially being here in Florida. This is the event that was meant to start the series. But due to COVID-19, it was pushed back more than 200 days. But now we're finally here at St. Pete. Now we're ready to bring the action. Now we're ready to crown a champion. Will Power from the pole position gets a good, clean start. He's up. James Hinchcliffe in that yellow and black and blue car, Paul, looking racy. Will Power went really early on that all start, clear, went clear. to the outside, weaved all the way down the front straightaway to break the draft from Alexander Rossi, and we have a clean turn one, two so far. Further back, that was Pato Award in the orange and black Aero McLaren SP car, trying to defend on Jack Harvey in the black and pink Auto Nation car. They're side by side, Newgarden is on the outside Whoa, trying to force tight. his way in with Sebastian Bourdais. Hometown race for Sebastian Bourdais. He qualified fantastic this weekend, looking for his third win here, fourth win. You got him. And then the newly crowned rookie of the year, Renus VK, tucked in there. Then Oliver Askew making his return to racing for Arrow McLaren SP. And he is a Floridian. So we wish.
wish him a good day, and he's just ahead of the championship leader, Scott Dixon. And looming just behind New Garden is Scott Dixon, right there, the orange and blue PNC car. All Dixon needs to do is keep New Garden in sight, and that's what he's doing right now. He can measure his pace, he can measure how much risk he takes as long as he stays close to New Garden. Scott Dixon has raced the second half of this season on defensive mode. He said it himself. Lee, when he did an interview with you, he's just kind of been gauging himself to the other drivers. I believe that that is not working out in his favor. He's lost a ton of points to Joseph Newgarden. Newgarden has been on the offense from half season on. Well, Paul, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Scott Dixon, one of the smartest guys in the field. That's why he's a five-time champion. I think he's going to points race. He's going to cover himself all the way to the sixth championship as best he can. He has to be careful, though, about all the other 22 drivers that don't care about his championship. Young guys that are pushing for a huge result here at one of the most prestigious races on the calendar. And already here, Lee, the fuel savings going on. These guys are going to try to do this in two stops, and that's going to take a little bit of fuel save as you see everybody lined up behind Will Power. I want to welcome in one of our two pit reporters here today, Kevin Lee. Hi, Kev. Hey, Diff. Uh, as you might expect, Scott Dixon seems like it's a normal weekend. Very calm for someone on the brink of something so special. A championship clinch today moves him within one of A.J. Foyt's record seven. And as PT was talking about, just got to stay within range of Joseph Newgarden. So when Newgarden pits, expect Scott Dixon to also pit to protect them against the yellow. After some changes last night, he says the race car is actually pretty good. Over to Marty Snyder. Hey, Kevin, Joseph Newgarden, the defending series champion and also the defending winner of this race, knows his path to the championship means he must win today and defend his title here in St. Pete, which is not going to be easy because they started eighth today. So they know it'll be a combination of strategy, and he has one of the best behind me in Tim Sendrick, and speed in that number one car for Team Penske. But also, as Paul mentioned, they have massively cut into the lead over the last several weeks. Joseph Newgarden has been on an incredible run cutting in almost every week to Scott Dixon. Newgarden knows the way to victory lane here at St. Pete, and he knows the way to defend the title must be that he has to win this afternoon. He's been like a uh, Pac-Man, the old video game, just chomping away at Scott Dixon's points lead. And you can see in the bottom left on that graphic, point scenarios and championship scenarios. So we will keep updating that as the day goes on as far as the point shift. At the moment, Newgarden's trimmed it to 27. Uh, so we'll see how this shapes out over a shorter than normal race, 10 laps shorter today, uh, out of 100 laps around the streets of St. Pete. 150 seconds of push to pass available for all the drivers today. That gives you extra power, but you have to use it carefully. So far, the top three cars haven't touched that go button yet, saving those 150 seconds for later in the race. Surprisingly clean start through the first few laps here as guys are just settling into the pace. You see everybody just lined up, like I said earlier. Will Power controlling the pace at the front, but not pulling away from anybody. If you've never seen a race here, an IndyCar race here at this circuit, that's actually a runway, an airport runway. We're at the Albert Witted Airport. There's a greater picture of it right there. It offers a huge challenge to the drivers. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a confusing circuit because parts of it are quite smooth, but then there are some bumps in key places that really force the drivers to catch the cars. It is a tough test around here, and especially given the atmospheric conditions, hot, humid, and uh, with the new aero screen on now. Now, it's not like we haven't had a race this year with these high temperatures. In fact, there was one race earlier in the year that was in the 90s, but the humidity is super high here in Florida, so these guys are going to have their uh, physical levels tested massively this afternoon. Rossi is right on the back of Will Power, only a half a second behind her right there. We still continue to follow. Here's a pass now for one of the oh, pets Power. here. Power had, has, has had an issue. That is, oh, and he goes way outside. wide, nearly takes her to out. So something going on with Power. He's got something bent or has brushed the wall. I don't think so. I think he might have just made a mistake in the last corner and then tried to get it all back in the break Bro. zone. He's got dirt on his tires, and here comes the field. Pato Award challenging power for position. 
Wow, that was a great catch at turn one, but what has happened? That's put Will Power back there. It elevates Alexander Rossi to the lead. Rossi has never had a season in his IndyCar career where he's not won a race. This could be the day that he keeps that trend going. And oh, he I is, think Power he's... just got wide. I think he ran wide at the hairpin or got off in the dirt. That's a really fast corner. This very next corner is wide, almost wide open, and it's really easy. A lot of guys have spun and gotten off the track. And then he got passed on the front straightaway. But now Rossi is gone. He's checked out two and a half seconds, and he is desperate for a win this season. And Will Power will be furious at whatever led to that, whether it was a mistake or some other issue, because track position is so critical oh. here. Newgarden, Newgarden Look on the Look at Newgarden. Down. He wants to charge Runs for that wide. win. Now That's he's got his tires dirty. The over under, and now he's Renus VK, super aggressive, gets a run. Oliver Askew right there. Look at VK on the outside, takes a look. And Dixon's lining up too. Oh, yeah. Dixon's Scott Dixon's loving only this. three car lengths back. Remember, if Newgarden wins, Dixon's got to finish 10th or worse, or 11th. Outside the top 10, Dixon is now 11th, so Newgarden knows maybe now's the time to start that march to the front, Marty. I heard Will Power say it on the radio, but I wanted to confirm with the team. He said he had a downshift issue right here. You see him going into that corner and said he had a downshift issue, lost all that power. Look at Alexander Rossi just shoot right by Will Power, who had control of the race from the pole. He's won two races from the pole this year and was in position to control the rest of this race. Now he's fallen back to fourth. So Town just kind of walk us through Towns and what a downshift issue could have been for Will Power. Well, here at St. Pete, you have to be so careful not to lock up the front tires as power has more he's issues got, here. He's got, more than down the outside. he's got way more than a downshift here, issue. Going on. It and he's be. got damage to the right rear, guys. We can check it out there from uh, Pato Awards on, on board. It could be that power is suffering to, from too much rear brake lockup and is having trouble getting the gearbox to shift cleanly because the rears are locking. We're going to have to watch closely here on board with Pato Award. It just looks like Powers hanging on to the balance of his car, the rear stepping out. So fighting oversteer on the red tires, two compounds on offer, and different drivers have selected to start on one or the other. You have to run both at some point in the race. Power on the reds, and it looks like they're starting to fall off for him. That orange and black car is the 21-year-old Mexican Pato Award. He's had three podiums this year in his first full season in IndyCar. He's desperate to win. He's sitting fifth at the moment. Tonight, Russell Wilson and the undefeated Seahawks head to Arizona to take on Kyler Murray and the Cardinals in an NFC West showdown. That's Seahawks-Cardinals tonight, 7 Eastern, only on NBC. As we welcome you back to the streets of St. Petersburg, this is the Firestone Grand Prix. It's the season finale. Alexander Rossi boasts. What's he got now? About one and a half seconds over his teammate Colton Herter. But Herter, on consecutive laps while we're in that break, set the fastest laps of the race. So Herter's flying, but Rossi's in good shape as well. And James Hinchcliffe, who sometimes is our NBC Sports teammate uh, on uh, either IndyCar or IMSA Sports Car Racing, uh, Hinch is doing a nice job running in third here at a track where he scored his very first victory in IndyCar. There's been some off, uh, off strategy uh, pit stops going on, off sequence, uh, as far as people who plan to go a little earlier, get themselves out of traffic. Scott McLaughlin for Team Penske just did, and Felix Rosenquist here in the NTT data car. Felix Rosenquist qualified at the back of the field, not by lap time, but he got a penalty, so he's taking the opportunity to do something different than the rest of these guys. And then McLaughlin during the commercial break did the same thing, started near the back of the field, and this was during commercial break, took an opportunity to get off these blacks. This is now on reds, clean air by himself, learning the Indy car, Townsend, getting used to what he's gonna be doing in the future now with Team Penske. And in order to make this strategy work, if it stays green the whole time, you're gonna have to make up about 30 seconds as we learn a little bit more about McLaughlin's background. He comes straight to us here in the NTT IndyCar Series from the Australian Supercar Series, where he won the title three consecutive years. He leaves Australia as the champ. He came from the Bathurst 1000 event last weekend. And I can tell you there's a lot of people in New Zealand and Australia up early this morning, watching it on a Monday morning down under to see how this guy does. Let's go to the pits. We think this might be interesting because there are two very different strategies. You can make it on two stops with a fuel save, 
but what about the tires? We're expecting some to be coming in as soon as possible, and we're seeing a little more shuffling here at this point. BK hustling it around here on his outlap here on cold tires. He's already wrapped up the Rookie of the Year championship. Started off rocky with a couple of crashes right off the bat, but Townsend, he's been phenomenal ever since. Yeah, and I'll be watching the lap times because when you go to a three-stop strategy, Marty, you've got to do it on, there you go. on pure pace. No more fuel saves, so VK, Rosenquist, and McLaughlin need to hustle. Meanwhile, Alexander Rossi up front. He's led nine laps so far. Here's a radio conversation a moment ago on the 2017. Cool. You're uh, doing a little better on mileage than he is, but he's catching a little running, running a little faster. Everybody talking what about do you think for Reds? Wing or just do it with the tools in the car? Wing. And that's the plan to go to Reds on the next stop for Alexander Rossi. Everybody going to be talking about fuel mileage. Everyone also in the paddock said Alexander Rossi and his teammate Colton Herta right behind him in second had the two best cars in morning warm-up. For Alexander Rossi, you mentioned it a moment ago, Lee, he's never had an IndyCar season where he has not won. This is his final shot to do that. And he told me mid-season, we had some tough conversations on our team. Didn't make any personnel changes, but we did make some philosophy changes on the 2017. So to close with a win would be very important. Meanwhile, his teammate Colton Herta is right behind him. The young man riding in second. He has a very good shot to win the race today. But he told me what I am really worried about, the weather. He said, I've never wanted a race to be over more in my life than this one. It's going to be a hot one today. This guy's been phenomenal this year with the, with the speed as Sebastian Bourdais, the hometown hero, three-time winner here, comes in to get off wheel sequence. Five, five. But Colton Herta has been phenomenal this year, and he's trying to deal with Rossi. Rossi is a master, Lee, at making fuel mileage. And Colton, who we need to remind ourselves and you as well, this guy is only 20 years of age. You see the Auto Nation on board there in this Honda. He has got a hunger for success. Oh, greater than most, and he yeah. has the ability to back it up. Driving like a 20-year-old, just watching Colton Herta a little more on edge for sure. Much more comfortable, I think, at this point in the tire life and hanging it out. Rossi looking a little more smooth and a little more measured with his inputs, but Colton Herta only knows one speed, and that is flat out. I, lo I love the juxtaposition that is Colton Herta. You won't meet a more chilled out Southern California kid. He enjoys playing in his rock band. He plays the drums, but, and, and you know, you can, sometimes you can hardly get a word out of him, but in the car, he is an animal. I'll tell you what, I mean, Rossi and Colton Herta right here, these two are teammates, but I, they're not buddies by any means. I think Rossi believes that he's the team leader in this organization and Colton Herta is the, you know, the sophomore guy. So and he's he's been taken over in terms of being who's in charge here. So Rossi wants to end that today. Pretty Something to keep in mind is that these three Andretti cars all running on the black tires right now. I've been watching lap times out of the corner of my eye. Will Power, the first car on reds. We know he's struggling a bit. He's 11 seconds back already and running about a half second a lap slower. This is all gonna flip-flop when those Andretti cars up front have to run reds at some point in this race. So there we see Will Power hanging on. My guess is that he'll finish the race. Black tires on the second stint, black tires on the third stint Powers. to try to take that pace advantage back to the front runners. Powers lost 11 seconds to Rossi and Herta since he had whatever was going on. So if it was one missed downshift, guys, it's gotta be something more than that to lose that much time. And Paul, that's exactly the plan that Townsend outlaid, starting on the red, softer, quicker, in theory, tires. The Firestones for Will Power going with the primary tires for the final two stops. And I think that's even more solidified when you see the lap time fall off on those red tires like it's falling off for Will Power right now. Putting on those primaries could be a massive advantage for Power on those final two stops of the day. You hear the brakes squealing Townsend going into the corners here. This, this track is particularly tough on brakes here. Not a lot of airflow and a lot of heavy brake zones. Well, especially when you're running in traffic. As we look back through the field a little bit more, looking for Santino Ferrucci in that black and yellow Sealmaster car. He's moved up seven positions since the start. And just to finish the point, Lee, when you run in traffic, the brakes just don't have the same ability for cool air to enter the ducts or clean air to enter the ducts, and that's what causes the brake temps to rise. How, for both of you, how big a deal do you think 
the physical fatigue factor is going to come in to the overall outcome of this race? Quick answer. I think it's going to be massive. 120 degrees inside the cockpit, maybe more for a guy like Santino Ferrucci, who's about 5'5", 120. You are muscling a bull around here. Yeah, there's just no airflow like when I used to drive the car. Now with this aero screen, it just gets so hot, and especially in this super humid Florida weather, it just makes it miserable in there. So you see there that Ferrucci on the Firestone Biggest Movers is the biggest mover. So running lap 19 of this 100, the shorter 100 lap race, the pace of Alexander Rossi and Colton Herter, James Hitchcliffe is super impressive. Championship watch, Dixon is doing, Scott Dixon is doing everything he needs to do to keep Joseph Newgarden in sight and just protect that points buffer that he has in his quest for a sixth IndyCar title. Racing the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg as we welcome you back to our coverage here on NBC. Scott Dixon, the 40-year-old New Zealander could create something special today by winning six championships. We mentioned that going to the break. What are his thoughts on today and this opportunity? A six championship would, would at the at the moment would be would mean the most. All championships are they're they're like kids, you know, you you'd love them all, but they're all very different. The pressure's always there, you know, whether you're chasing or if or if you're leading, you know, it's it still ultimately comes down to when you're crowned a champion. And Scott using the analogy there of kids. He himself is the father of three, two young girls and a little baby boy who came into the world uh, in the holidays last year. So in the space of 12 months, this has been a pretty special period of time for Scott Dixon. Nobody better Townsend than this guy. Five time champion. We're gonna get a little radio, see what's going on in the cockpit. They're trying to get New Garden to save a bit of fuel. So they're obviously on a two stopper like we are. He's on black, he's just gonna to try to outrun us here at the moment, it appears. The strategy there from his chief strategist, Mike Hall. He's a master on the radio, has coached Scott Dixon to all of his championships, so got getting all the right information. And a little different than the NFL, you can actually hear what your competitors are saying on the radio in IndyCar. So Mike Hall listening very closely to the number one car. He knows that they're on fuel safe, so he knows they're on the same strategy. And now he also knows that if Dixon can hang on here with the Reds, he'll advantage on the Blacks a little later on, knowing that Newgarden will have to run the Reds, which are peaky, good at the beginning, but probably a little slower on total pace over a long 34-lap stint. You may have noticed uh, fans in attendance here at the Firestone Grand Prix, which is really pleasing to see. It's helped create quite the buzz around this street circuit. Cap, though, limited to 20,000 people here on site, of course, for uh, COVID-19 reasons. But for Green Savory Promotions, that's Kim Green and Kevin Savory, actually Paul Tracy's old bosses who run the uh, promotion business. They put on not only this race, but the Grand Prix in Toronto, the Mid-Ohio race, and also the Portland, Oregon IndyCar race. It's been a huge relief to them, massive undertaking. And for everybody involved in their organization, everybody from IndyCar, to actually pull off this season. Because, fellas, there were times where we didn't think we were going to go racing at all. And here we are. This is the 14th and final race on the season. And what a relief it is to actually where we all came in March here, Marty, to the streets of St. Pete to kick the season off, and then we all went home. Well, it's nice to close the season here in St. Pete. Terrific venue, and the fans have been fantastic. An electric atmosphere down here before the race. Hey, as we fo focus on the championship, Joseph Newgarden ahead of Scott Dixon. There he is. He's sitting in the seventh position. We heard Mike Hall say they were on fuel save for Joseph Newgarden. That was correct until about two laps ago. Tim Sendrick said, hey, close that gap to Jack Harvey in front of you. Don't worry about the fuel right now. Newgarden has since turned up the wick, has cut about half a second out of his deficit to Jack Harvey. So clearly they have some speed in the one car and we're closing in on this first set of stops about 10 laps or so. And you see everyone, you hear Tim Sendrick again, hey, close that gap to the 60. He wants to pass that 60 car, get in the top six before this first stop of the race. Well, the cars behind him have followed him in that gap. Pat or uh, Oliver Askew right there another hometown kid uh, here in his home race coming off a concussion so he's having a good run and Dixon is right there behind him so Newgarden trying to push the issue but these guys are following in tow right on board with Askew looking out back and let's just recognize how strong Askew's been on his return to the IndyCar series Paul mentioned 
the concussion. He missed several races. He wasn't sure if he'd get a chance to race at all this season. He showed up here in St. Pete, been strong from the drop of the green flag in practice one, and now he sits between the two championship contenders straight up legit on pace. And I think you note this. This is something you won't see on very many cars. That is an additional airflow item that's available in the IndyCar series. Askew has opted to add that to his cockpit cooling. A little tough after first practice because he had been out of the car for so long, Lee, and he looked yeah. like he was feeling the heat. NBC's coverage of IndyCar is brought to you by Firestone. Drive the tire that drives IndyCar legends. Guaranteed rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Visit rate.com today. NTT, official sponsor and technology partner of the NTT IndyCar Series. And by Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar Series. And speaking of Honda, there is the familiar Honda two-seater driven by the one and only, the legend Mario Andretti. He has Miguel Cortina as his passenger today. And that was a little earlier, of course, before the race. Miguel's the managing editor for Motor Trend and Espanol. So Mario enjoying his time and Miguel enjoying his time on the streets of St. Pete, just as we are as well. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, Kevin Lee and Marty Snyder with you, bringing you the action from this very tough street course that is the venue for the championship decider. At the moment, it's not going the way here for, as we look on the Hitachi onboard, for Joseph Newgarden, for Scott Dixon. He's got a little wide open down here, straight down on the board now, right with Blair. There's the cues to execute a good, smooth, fast pit stop, and Kevin Lee is there. Michael told him this is just a little bit earlier than we planned, but we'll be fine. And they're right there. 30 is what we thought, especially those on the alternates had to go. Expect them to run primary Firestones the rest of the time. Dixon, first stop done. Quick stop, 6.8 seconds for four tires and fuel. Where does Newgarden come around? He pitted the lap before. Will they come out together right here? There goes Newgarden. So advantage still to Newgarden. He's ahead. Whoa. Whoa. That was close with Sebastian Bourdais. The blend here at St. Pete can be brutal as car tires, cars on track with hot tires are trying to shut down guys like Scott Dixon coming out on cold tires and trying to get temperature. Marty, how was the stop for Joseph Newgarden? All the games here on pit road are rich, Townsend. Tim Sendrick, knowing that Scott Dixon's team was going to hear him call Joseph Newgarden to pit road, he did not call Newgarden to pit road until the next to the last corner coming around to pit road. He called him down. Scott Dixon's team was not able to react in time. They came the lap after that, as you just saw, but clean stop for Newgarden. They put on sticker red tires. Now, I would say with the tire wear we've seen with those red softer Firestone tires. The plan for Newgarden was to run another set of red tires at the end of the race. I think they're going to bail on that plan and go to primaries for the last stop of the race. Well, the track's rubbering up with every lap. This is a temporary track, so it's going to get faster and faster and faster. Townsend, and I think it might be a good strategy because by the time the end of the race, you see all that rubber build up in the fast corner. That's going to make the, the tires last a lot better. I think Scott Dixon at the second part of this stint right now chasing Newgarden, that's his advantage as Newgarden's on the reds, Dixon will be on the harder black tire. I think the black tire is the better one over the stretch. So in about 15 laps should be the crossover point where it's going to be hard for Newgarden to hang on and Dixon can press and try to put an end to any championship challenge as power comes to pit lane. Yeah, but it's a bit of a disappointing start for Will Power. He comes down pit lane. You see those alternate tires on. They're going to go with primary sticker Firestone tires for Will Power. Lost those three spots when he had that uh, downshift issue, possible brake lockup issue. Primary is going on. Power's been fairly happy with the car, but obviously lost all those positions. We'll see if he cycles out through this sequence. Another beautiful stop by Team Penske. Hard on it. Out of the clear, pits. You see that little behind the back throw with that wheel gun, Townsend? That wheel gun is about $8,000. Wow, right rear is flat for Felix Rosenquist. I wonder if there was contact with another car. Right, right Rose rear. Rosenquist makes a forced pit stop. Ferrucci was making Come a move on. up We're the inside at turn four. Oh boy, oh boy. Might have cut his tire down right there. That Yeah, his tire is down. See the front wheels up off the ground. So he got a cut rear tire from the front wing of Ferrucci. Ferrucci was in there at the corner. 
Pretty tight quarters around here on the street course, Good and it's save. cut that tire down. Good save for sure. Guys, what's something we haven't had that we typically have early here at St. Pete? Yellow. Haven't had a caution yet. This is uh, non-typical for this race, this track. Here it is. On board, the NTT onboard camera shows us the view. Ferrucci had just come out of the pit lane, was on cold tires, and got a little much. muscle to the apex, Paul, but yeah. that can really cause issues, and it did for Ferrucci as both the Aero McLaren SP cars pit on lap 33. Here's O'Ward out of the pits. They barely touched, and that front wing just sliced that rear tire of Felix Rosenquist down, so that's how easy these tires will go down. And we have some racing right now going out of the pits with teammates right oh, here. Look at this. That's Newgarden and Power, and O'Ward is there ready to pounce. These two guys were going at it in, in, in uh, morning warm-up as well, Will Power and Joseph Newgarden. If I'm Roger Penske, I'm looking at my guy saying, hey, man, what are you doing? <laughs> if I'm Joseph Newgarden, I'm saying, hey, man, throw me a bone, Will Power. I'm into the championship fight of my life here. Hinchcliffe on pit lane goes to Reds. James Hinchcliffe comes in and goes to sticker Reds. He's back out, coming in from third, Marty. Colton Herta pitted from second. His teammate Alexander Rossi still on the racetrack. Herta with a little bit of a longer stop, but the racing on the track, Lee, is fantastic <laughs> right now. It is crazy. We go on board the PNC Bank car with Scott Dixon, the, the championship push. leader. On the push to pass. He's got Bourdais just in front of him, but everybody still stacked up behind Will Power. Will Power continues to struggle. It has a line of cars behind him. Somebody was coming out of the pits, too. That's a difficult situation to blend into. Look at this. Pato Award defending there, trying to keep Sebastian Bourdais behind. That's Dixon here as the race leader is in. Alexander Rossi. I think that was Sato just came out of the pits. Marty, Rossi's coming to you. And what a terrific first step for Alexander Rossi, making it go longer than everyone else. But I think with the way we've seen this blend happen, I think Rossi is glad. He hopefully built a little bit of a lead. Very happy with the chassis of the car. You see that one turn in front wing. That is for sticker red tires for Alexander Rossi, who again went one lap further. They hope they build up enough gap to kind of give him some cushion here. And you hear the, ten, the team saying, push, push, push as hard as you can. You see Colton Herter right there with Rossi. Built a Rossi nice gap. Out. Built a nice gap going that one extra lap. He's on cold tires right now. So it'll probably about equal out to where it was before the stop, about a second, second and a half for Herter behind. So right now, it's Andretti cars running one, two, three as Scott Dixon is trying to make a move and gets pushed wide. What a great shot there. You can see the penalty for getting a little bit wide in turn one as Dixon's tires pick up the marbles and the dirt. He has to check up and get him cleaned up back in the groove. Newgarden, meanwhile, up to fifth. Dixon sits in 11th. That's what Newgarden needs. Forward progress with Dixon stuck mid-pack. Newgarden these, still has a real good chance, guys. None of these guys care about Scott Dixon's championship position. Newgarden now is taking off and leaving these guys. He gets by Will Power here. Will Power puts a squeeze on him right here. They make contact. It's unbelievable racing, but he is now checked out on Scott Dixon, but he needs to get more points to win the championship. Here it is. This is the view from Joseph Newgarden. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that was almost double Team Penske disaster, Marty. Yeah, and Will Power said on the radio, I didn't know he was there. I almost wrecked him. So clearly Power would not put his teammate who's trying to win a championship in a situation like that. But you guys made the point through that sequence, pitting a lap before everyone else, and it certainly his championship rival, Scott Dixon. Joseph Newgarden jumped two spots. Now he's in the top five. They've cut the lead to 21, but put themselves in oh. a much better spot. And a problem for Will Power. Contact. Will Contact, Power has yeah. hit, hit the wall coming onto the, onto the straightaway and he I think he crashed there a couple of years ago and almost certainly this will bring out a yellow and that'll make this really interesting here we go full course caution flies for the first time today the pole sitter is out of the race it was a rather inauspicious start for Will Power as well in the opening laps and now his day his season is over through the fast S's he probably got Townsend out into those marbles and just pounded the wall on the outside because both of the wheels on the outside there he's such a great qualifying phenomenal qualifying effort magical lap but here's the marbles look at that yeah you get drop a wheel into that coming onto the straightaway and you're a passenger into the wall oh willpower look at him absolutely furious nine poles in 12 races here 
the undisputed fastest man on the streets of St. Pete. And it's over. He's not even at halfway, and he can't believe it. How did it all go he wrong? He really wanted the win because his goal, he told me right before the start of the race, he knew that he was only 12 points behind Colton Herter. He wanted to win and get third in the championship to turn the season around. The second half was a lot stronger than the opening half, and this is just it's a little tired, too. Brutal. He's kind of bent over there, kind of catching his breath. But uh, looking hard here, Paul, to see if we can find an angle. And we're on board. Uh, he's hit the wall the coming on the straightaway. Yeah. Got out in the marbles. And he had a big crash there a couple years ago. He backed it in real hard there. And, I mean, he had such a phenomenal qualifying effort. And really from the drop of the green, guys, he was never really dominant. He was kind of had the whole line of cars behind him. And, And guys, I think that's frustration for willpower today. That's frustration for this season. They've had so many things go wrong from the from behind the wheel, from the timing stand. Just things have not come together for willpower. And Lee, you're exactly right. He told me before the race, I really feel like number one, we can win the race, but we can finish third in the championship. You can just absolutely see the frustration for willpower. Yeah, and see how hot and humid it is. Different angle, look down the line. Wow, wow. steps out, smashes the concrete barrier. And it's over. He had been loose on the first set of tires, Paul, and just carried the oversteer there and just not enough room to hang on to it here at St. Pete. A quick reminder that this Tuesday, America's favorite family drama is back with a huge two hour premiere. This Is Us returns Tuesday, 9, 8 Central, only on NBC. I know many of you are looking forward to that big two hour premiere for the new season as we welcome you back. Really terrific aerial shot with it. Thanks to our friends at Geico for this, just giving you a good feel for uh, the overall area. What a great place it is to, um, to have a race, which we've been doing for a long time. And our booth mate here with Townsend, myself, Paul Tracy, won the very first one, 2003. Hey, talk about winning this place. And I said it right at the top of the show, the whole Tampa Bay area has been a, a hotbed for sporting success with, um, the Stanley Cup victory, incredible. And then did you see this last night? This incredible comeback by the Tampa Bay Rays. So not only to, to add to the lightning success, now obviously the Rays haven't done it just yet, but they did form a terrific comeback to draw the World Series to all. And then we talk about the Buccaneers, Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, they've kind of got their mojo uh, back going, back in sync. And then right there at Al Lang Stadium, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, the, uh, the soccer club, the football club, they won 2-1 over Louisville last night uh, to advance to the USL Championship final next Sunday against Phoenix Rising. So there has been a lot happening, a lot of good things happening in this area. Great energy and Paul, we come here every year and say to each other, I, I could live here. I mean, great yeah. food, great people, friendly, awesome quality of life. Nothing better than St. Pete and this time in October. With the race in town, it's like the Monaco of South Florida. Awesome place to come. <laughs> it is. And some pretty nice boats here as well. United Rentals on, ball, on board of Graham Rahal. He's the biggest mover since the start up 10 positions. Graham and wife Courtney are expecting their first child any day now. So as soon as this race is done, Graham is off home to California for the birth of his first child. Ready to go great, racing. Great, great. And Rossi's car stepped out a little yeah, bit. A lot of slipping and sliding there, but Felix Rosenquist is gonna have a look right now. I think he's a lap down. How about Newgarden? Guys. Newgarden's looking on VK. Newgarden inside has the position. And Harvey. And Harvey gonna squeeze his way through, but you can't run too wide here. Oh, he's gonna get lined up now by Ray Hall. He runs a little bit wide. Ray Hall gets bottled up. Watch them, oh. fan, watch them fan out here and try to make a move. VK is hanging on with dirt all over the tires from getting pushed wide. Nobody more aggressive than Renus VK. See him step sideways there on the power. Look at the back, look at the back of his car. Oh, yellow, 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 full course yellow. Wow, there two, car in the wall. Uh -oh. Ferrucci, the seal master Honda of Santino Ferrucci for Dale Coin Racing with Vassa Sullivan. That's at the exit of turn one and damage as parts out on the track, so. A fixable situation or we're done? Are you here, Jimmy Vassar? Oh, we're very done. Okay. Ten Ferrucci, more, uh, Thanks for your efforts. Ferrucci saying we're very done. That means pretty big impact into the concrete. Yeah, that's a pretty fast corner right there. It looks like he lost it there. See the skid marks, Paul. I wonder if he had contact with somebody. Yeah, it's damaged 
well. Good. The front corner's bent. Oh, that's a bad that's, impact. Yeah. Look at that. Straight lines into the wall right there. Must have touched wheels with somebody. Good to hear him talking back. Right at pit exit there. Fast corner right there. When you come out of turn one, then you accelerate through that little kink. It's near about 110 miles an hour through there. And you can see there's a tire barrier right there, but it ends in that break in the wall. So uh, Santino Ferrucci is the second uh, retirement for this race. The first was Will Power. He's with Marty. And Will sitting here kind of dissecting what exactly happened. So what was the incident that put you out of the race, Will? Just lost it, the rear bottomed and just had a moment. What was the first incident when you were running up front, you were first yeah. and then it all of a sudden slowed down? Yeah, the downshift, it didn't downshift for some reason. It happened a couple times and then I started downshifting really early and uh, it didn't really happen again, but yeah, don't know what happened. I have a feeling like we made a mistake by not by putting that vent on the top because it loses performance and that was downforce and then, yeah, bad. You added the vent to, to be cool today because obviously yeah. a very hot day, Will. Yeah, we should How have, tough were the conditions? Should have run it in. It was not bad actually with the vent on. Um, should have run it in warm up because um, I hadn't had those issues. Downshift issues, I'm not sure what that was. It's very strange. It just didn't go down gear so I kind of was in fourth or third going out of that corner and that's where Rossi got me and then her to attack me um, and yeah lost those positions. We, we saw the frustration saw you throw the gloves was that yeah. more about today or just this entire season where so many things have kind of bit you this year? Uh, yeah that was that was definitely frustrated with what you know my mistake there um, hitting the wall like just just a mistake the car got loose and um, yeah very frustrating I shouldn't we shouldn't be the only one crashing, man. It's my bad and put us out of the race and they have a bad, bad situation, man. That's a tough one to swallow yeah. for Will Power and you, and you know the frustration, Lee, and he'll carry this into the entire off season as well and, and had such a fast car, really thought he could win this race today. This is a tough way to, to end it being the first car out. Tough way to end it, but can address it when we return here to the streets of St. Petersburg next March, March 7th. Not only is it the season ender, it'll be the traditional season opener in just five months time. That was He's his guy. Hans device. He, he hurled like yeah. a boomerang. But you can just see the, the conditions, guys. I mean, power, even with that additional vent piece, is, is visibly exhausted just at half distance. So we still have 57 laps yeah. to go. You have a thrown boomerang? He's just <laughs> such a merc mercurial guy. He's hot, hot, or he's cold, cold. And he just wears all of his emotions on the sleeve. He never holds back from how he's feeling in the moment. And you know, it's been a frustrating year for him this year. And, you know, you hate to go into the off season with a result like that. Then you got all this time to think about it, but you got to get re-motivated for next year and get gear up for 21. What about you, PT? You went to Australia a lot. You ever thrown a boomerang? Uh, no, I haven't. I'd like to throw one at I, T. Bell, I though. Threw, I threw <laughs> one. See if I can hit him with it. <laughs> I threw one once, but it, it flew like a Hans device. It didn't turn There's around and come I back to me. Here's contact here. Contact, contact with Ferrucci. Side by side with, I think, Sato. Oh, oh. Nice. And that was a very unkind angle. Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't know if they made contact. I think he just got stuck out there in the dirty part of the track. And then once you're there, you, you can't turn the car. And Santino's Ferrucci's words to his co team owner, Jimmy Vassa, the 1996 IndyCar champion We are very, very done. Car severely damaged. Good to see. Santino out and walking away, uh, but that's a nasty place to have an impact and just head on into that concrete barrier. This place is tough. It's we talk about the beauty of the region and the area, but as far as a racetrack, this is brutal. A very unforgiving track with all the concrete walls. No room for error at all. How aggressive is that green and white capstone turbine Honda going to be? Colton Herder, we will see as we go to the pits with Kev. Michael is calling strategy for Scott Dixon, trying to bring him to a sixth championship. So Mike, all according, according to plan, any concerns right now? <laughs> uh, the next uh, 
the next 57 laps, maybe, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> let's just try to let's just try to get to the end here together. Did you find out if you like the Reds better than the Blacks so far? Well, we or were surprised all the at how well the Reds stood up stood up for us. Uh, they didn't they didn't have a massive amount of fall off, although the front was a little bit unpredictable. But all in all, they were good. So we're on Blacks now. Obviously, the field is kind of split still, and that'll that'll probably have an effect as the, on the race as it goes onward. Thanks, Mike. Marty. Eighth, the fourth for Joseph Newgarden. Tim Sindrick, you happy with that progress to be able to leapfrog four spots here early on? Yeah, without a doubt. I, I feel like, sorry. I <laughs> Too many like radios right going on. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to get track position here. Um, you know, with a two-stop race, it's been, a, I guess, a matter of coming in early, hoping for yellows like what we have here to make up the fuel mileage. But, um, you know, I think Scott's, those guys are on top of it. You know, they're going to follow us around. And the only real hope we have is to try and win this thing. Um, with a little bit of luck, you know, one way or the other, but Joseph's doing a good job just kind of managing the game. So with the way the tire wear has been on that first run, would you go towards blacks or towards reds for that final stint, Tim? Yeah, right now it looks like they're pretty pretty much the same, so I, I think we weren't really giving up anything other than the outlap for the, uh, the blacks, um, but it's really you want to be different than the other guys in front of you to a certain extent to have a chance to win, so it might be the wrong decision but uh, you don't want to just follow everybody around either. There you go, and at least they're going to try and make a decision to put themselves in a position to win the race, win the championship. So they may go kind of the opposite of what they think Scott Dixon will do on this last stop as we uh, come to green damage. here in a moment. Got some damage on the back of Connor Daly's car, and it's, it's more than flat. I think it's bent as well, so. Big damage. It, I wonder if he was trying to warm his tires and lost it because yeah, it was so slippery on the last restart. Everybody was scrambling for rear grip. That's what caught out Ferrucci. And unfortunately, it looks like Connor Daly has found the wall under yellow. You can see the white damage to the outside of the wheel. Paul, yeah. any, any idea what might have happened? Well, it's probably warming up the tires and he must have slapped the wall, but you gotta be careful getting back on that flat tire because if it starts to come apart, then it'll start ripping the bodywork off as well. So. So Connor says, I have no idea what happened. Left rear toe link and the flat as well, but it sounds like he didn't hit anything. Unless you guys find something, they are very confused, and so is the pit stand. They must have hit, must have hit something. Well, until they find the visual evidence, I'd go with that plan. <laughs> yeah. I think our production team has found something. Let's have a close look here. NBC it. It's a little, uh, it's a little tough, but it's si si very similar to Will Power. I think something happened there, Paul. Yeah, I didn't. Looks like he just lost it on the power yeah, yeah. and got into the wall there. There's no telling stories with our with our team. No, I'll tell you right. that we we catch everything at NBC. <laughs> oh man, tough luck. Now can he stay on the lead lap? Well, it's bent. So well, I know, but can they get a toe lap. link on there in 30 seconds? Doesn't look like it. So while the Ed Carpenter Racing Team go to work to help Connor Daly there in the U.S. Air Force Chevrolet. Let's go, as they say, let's go. Let's take you to some radio aboard uh, Colton Herder. Around what lap are we trying to get to? A window opens at 65. It's more important to clean the tires and save fuel at this point. Very smart thinking by Colton Herder because it's so slippery on cold tires with the pickup. He's saying, I'm tr you know, he's asking to save fuel, but it's more important, Townsend, to get the tires hot than save the fuel. Yeah, for sure, and and with all the yellow we've had, they should be fine on fuel. So I think Colton Herta doing a really good call. We're about to go back to green. How much of a handful will it be this time? I think it's just going to be as, as much of a challenge, Lee. We're about to find out. Watch Rossi in this pink and black, this pink and gray car. The green, rear green, stepped green. out last Whoa. time. It's a cleaner start. Look at this. The drag Felix. race down. Felix Rosenquist, who, of course, is not on the lead lap, trying to get back on the lead lap as he goes up the inside in that blue NTT Honda that, on the inside of Herder. And that'll be a problem for Herder now to have a car in between him and Rossi. That'll give Rossi some breathing room and let him get away. Herder's got his teammate Hinchcliffe with a really good run in that yellow and black car onto the back straightaway. Oh. And there's contact oh. here. McLaughlin and Rena's VK. What has happened here with the... Rookie and the first timer. Scott McLaughlin in that Shell V Power Chevrolet coming from the Australian Supercar Championship as a three time champion. It's announced that he will be a full time IndyCar driver in a fourth car for Team Penske next year. 
This is not the way he wanted to end his first day they in were, IndyCar. They were running 17th and 18th, had made pit stops on that last yellow, but here's the replay. Just a lot of guys going for the same real estate here. And, well, it looks like McLaughlin got into the back of, of uh, Marco Andretti and spun right in front of VK, so really nothing VK could have done there. Looked like everybody kind of stacked up in front of McLaughlin. See McLaughlin on the inside right there. He makes contact and then spins right in front of the 21 car of Renus VK. NBC's coverage of IndyCar is brought to you by United Rentals, official equipment rental services provider of Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan, and sponsor of Graham Ray Hall. Land Rover, above and beyond. Liberty Mutual Insurance, only pay for what you need. And by Firestone, drive the tire that drives IndyCar legends. As we welcome you back to St. Peter, quick reminder on what's coming up today on NBC MotoGP. It's that second weekend in Aragon in northern Spain. Coming into today's Grand Prix, the eight different winners on the season, incredible. 6 p.m., local news, 7 o'clock. Join Mike Tirico and the guys for Football Night in America in the lead up to Sunday Night Football, Seahawks Cardinals. What a great day of viewing. Don't need to go anywhere. Here's Kevin Lee. Kev? Diff, let's kind of update the championship and the two contenders so far all going according to plan for Scott Dixon. But you have to imagine they feel fortunate at this point to avoid this chaos that's been going on with all this contact in the race that's the one thing really most likely they could lose the championship for Dixon who's been running eighth and in the top 10 most of this race and is still within range of Joseph Newgarden so they're right there but as Mike Hall just told us a few minutes ago we've still got a lot of racing to go and one more pit stop before we're going to feel safe. Marty. Well, Kevin, what's the old racing adage? Cautions breed cautions. We've certainly seen that here in the last little bit at St. Pete. Joseph Newgarden, the other championship contender, doing exactly what he needs to do. He started eighth today. He is up to fourth. His closest call was this with his teammate Will Power earlier. And Newgarden showing, hey, I'm not going to back down to anyone, even if you are my teammate. I need every spot. I would expect Joseph Newgarden to be very aggressive with James Hinchcliffe, who is right in front of him. That's another spot Newgarden could get to get into the top three and give himself a shot to win the race here in St. Pete and maybe win a title, Lee. It is all to play for here today, and look at the lap count. We are at the halfway point of this Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. You know, guys, uh, when Kevin was doing his report, I couldn't help but think in the background there, there was a shot of Stefan Johansson, former F1 driver, open wheel driver, sports car driver. Stefan has been the longtime manager of Scott Dixon. When Dixon left uh, New Zealand and Australia and came to the United States in 1999, he drove for Johansson Motorsports. There's Stefan, a renowned, these days a renowned artist. Um, you know, Stefan has been an integral part of the whole Dixon package ever since 1999. And I mean, think about the pride that must be in that man's heart. He's not a family member, of course, but he's kind of like it because he has been so instrumental in a, in a guiding force and a mentor in Scott's career. Of course, Dixon has done the, the job behind the wheel, but Johansson has looked after this guy since he was a kid. He invested in Scott's career way back when, and it's paid off uh, many times over. Let's hear a little radio from Scott Dixon because these are anxious moments, I'm sure, on the restarts. How critical is fuel? Because like, I'm really struggling to keep camp up. That's fine, Scott. You can do that. Not an issue. Not an issue. Trying so, to keep temp, so he's trying to keep the water temperature up in the car. So to do that, you want to get the RPMs up, spin the tires up, clean the tires up. So have been on a long time under yellow. So these guys are struggling to keep temperatures in the motor as and well. And these are, these are stressful times for not only Dixon, but that whole 19, because these restarts have been total chaos, Marty. We've had yellow after yellow, and Dixon knows, I just need to protect the car here, and I'll be fine. And I think with temp, he's meaning he wants to warm up the tires and get rid of the marbles. Everybody, Alexander Rossi, the leader, everyone's talking about the marbles around the racetrack where the Firestone tires kind of turn into little pieces of rubber, and they are picking them up. And that's what's making these restarts so crazy. If you get some on your tires, you don't clean them properly, it can mean disaster on a restart. And that's what all the drivers are talking about right now. Literally, Those marbles live on the rears and the fronts. 
So you get down into turn one, it's like turning on ice and then go to pick up 750 horsepower and they spin up like like, like a, nothing else. Like a dog trying to find traction on a polished wooden <laughs> like, floor. Like Fred Flintstone. <laughs> Here's Kevin with Scott McLaughlin. Unfortunately, Kev, he's out of the race. Scott, I know you're frustrated right now, but I think a lot of people were impressed with what you did. Tell us about your first experience in an IndyCar. Oh, it was awesome. Far out. It was the best, best day of my life, by my wedding. Um, yeah, I was scanning away uh, along there. The Shell V-Power Nitro Plus uh, IndyCar was going real well, and then I just made a, a, yeah, a move. On, I tried to block Marco, and then I felt like I was there or thereabouts and just made a half a, half a, a rear lock, and I'm not exactly sure, but... Yeah, cold tires caught me out a little bit, but um, yeah, pretty disappointed, but I had a lot of fun today. It's great to have you here. Can't wait to see you here all season next year. Yeah, Thanks. thank you. Cheers. A super talent, a super, super talent who's going to find his footing in IndyCar, I think, very quickly in the 2021 season. So the more they drive around on these marbles, Townsend, it's the longer it takes for the tires to get cleaned up. And what happens is it just feels like you're driving on ice. And as you get the pickup, it also feels like the tires have gone out of balance because you're carrying around right. all that extra rubber on top of the tires and then the wheel weights go up. But we're going back to green now. Let's Look at those it. points. This could change dramatically if there's more drama on this restart. Let's try and find some rhythm here. Let's hey, see how we go. Let's see how we go. Look at Rosenquist. He's determined to get his lap back. That blue car sitting in second. Green, green, green. Here goes the Swedish driver. He jumps on the inside there of Alexander Rossi. It'll be a braking duel into turn one. Pato Award ducks out of the line. Rosenquist going for that, getting that lap back and can't quite do it. Rossi really got the bit between his teeth to keep that lap car between him and his teammate. They're As too a wide here, too wide in front. Look, listen how slow everybody's going, how carefully they are applying the throttle. Lifting and breaking through that fast. Oh! Nearly contact with Pato Award. That was Jack Harvey throwing a shoulder at Pato Award. Is Dixon, Dixon. Dixon's rounding up Jack Harvey. He's going to get them both oh, here. Careful, Dixon, careful. Oh, he knew better to back out. That's one car width wide as they go side by side to this section. Graham Rahal there in the United Rentals Honda for Rahal, Letterman, Lanigan. Couple of Honda drivers. He's going to get Harvey here. Harvey can't get off the corner side by side through the fast fast kink that here. Point. So two positions on that lap, more points. Huge sigh of relief for that number nine team that Dixon survived at least the first 10 corners of the restart. Now he's got some breathing room. Further back with Askew chasing Hunter Ray, and this could get dramatic in this final corner to the front straight. Race control is looking oh, at the Jack Harvey Pato Award moment. Inside there for Oliver Overtake Askew, and he hip checks. Not a chance. Harvey 500 winner. He's going to get Harvey as well. Harvey is still hanging on, so nice move by Askew to hip check Graham Rahal out of the way, and Askew's going to get another position, it looks like. All of these guys just tiptoeing on this opening lap, trying to get temperature, trying to clean up the tires. Santo's been in the mix of a lot of action all day long. Be smart, be smart. How about Marco Andretti there? Look at this. Dives to the oh. inside. Harvey's going to take two. Marco Andretti, two in the one move. Three that was wide. awesome. Three wide down the back straightaway. Andretti has made up 15 placings from the start. The 98 is flying. Good work. And that's a problem for Sebastian Bourdais. Bourdais needs to beat Marco Andretti. Now Bourdais, who was running fifth at one point, is down in 14th and Marco is up to eighth and gonna make another position here. And the reason that that andretti Bourdais battle is so important is for the 22nd spot in the points here in the last race of the season. That's worth roughly a million dollars to that team for next year, whoever can secure that final spot. Marco is a master in tricky conditions. He's always one of the guys to go to slicks when it's wet out and make that first move. So Kevin, he's really making moves here. There he goes, oh, big, big lock up on the front straight, but he gets the position. He makes it work. Marco Andretti going after the money. And this looks like his best drive in what's been a miserable season and credit Brian Herta. Marco Andretti was very upset early and this just is not working. And Brian said the strategist, who by the way, has strategized his way to an Indianapolis 500 win a couple of different times. He said, this is gonna work. We've still got a chance. So credit Brian Herta for giving him a chance and Marco for taking advantage of it. And that's got him at the moment back in the winner's circle, back in that top 22. Race control says Jack Harvey has to give back two spots. Oh, you bet right there. That's in reaction to the move from Askew. 
Slick move there by Scott oh, Dixon. But he gets pushed out right here, like squeezed up against the wall, then has to go side by side. For years, we've talked about Dixon's critical decision making in critical situations. It always seems like he makes the right call at the right time. That was another example of Scott Dixon understanding the significance of the moment and protecting his car, Marty, in this championship battle. Absolutely terrific by Scott Dixon, showing why he's a multi-time champion, trying to win his sixth today. Hey, Ryan hunter sitting back there in 10th. He wasn't happy with some contact either. He said, if that was an avoidable contact on the restart, I don't know what the definition is. He asked IndyCar to review it. Obviously, Harvey needed to give up a spot. He's still one spot, though, in front of Ryan hunter right now. This is more than a college football game. It's number one Clemson and number four Notre Dame. Saturday, November 7th, it's in prime time right here on NBC. Looking forward to that. And looking forward to these closing 42 laps. Welcome back, folks. Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. The championship finale, the closing race on the 2020 season. Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, who won the first ever race here in 2003 along with Marty Snyder and Kevin Lee having a great day here in St. Pete. So too is Alexander Rossi. Rossi had led 22 laps the entire season before today. Rossi has dominated, leading 54 laps so far on championship day. The fight, the showdown between Scott Dixon and Joseph Newgarden. At the moment, it's power to Dixon. And he's got a buffer between himself and second place. But here is James Hinchcliffe, our co co worker here at NBC, great guy in the booth, looking at a podium, filling in right now, or to replacing Zach Beach in the Gainsbridge car, and having a great run. So Andretti won, runs one, two, three as a team, and we already documented Marco Andretti's amazing charge from 16th to 7th on the restart, putting himself in critical contention for the final leader, leader circle position and that million dollar bonus for next season. Something happened about five races ago that turned the fortunes of this Andretti team because Alexander Rossi's had four podiums in a row. Now he leads here at St. Pete. This is really how he wanted to start the year this way. And it's, it's finishing off. So this is a Doing good a way to job. finish off Keeping the year. That he definitely wanted to go for a championship this year. And in the first five races, they just were not competitive the whole team and lost so much ground to Dixon. But now they're making back up for it, Marty. Lost Speedways is a new Peacock original documentary series with host Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Matthew Dillner. They uncover great racing cathedrals of the past. This is a really cool show. Lost Speedways is now available exclusively on Peacock, the new streaming service from NBC Universal. You can sign up at peacocktv.com and stream Lost Speedways and so many other shows. Colton Herter's race has changed dramatically and very abruptly. This is the current onboard view with thanks to AutoNation, but he should not be looking at the back of Joseph Newgarden's Team Penske Chevy. Yeah, this is why it happened. This is how it happened. Looks like he locked it up and just decided I'm going down the runoff. I'm not going to make the corner. And Rossi will like that because now He's got a seven second lead over his teammate, James Hinchcliffe. Herta comes out right behind Hinchcliffe and Newgarden, which puts him P4, but that allows Newgarden to get ever closer to the front and the win, Marty, that Newgarden really needs at this point. Yeah, getting interesting. Joseph Newgarden up to third, and remember on that first set of stops, they gained four positions. Now he's nine seconds behind Rossi, but this could certainly play into his favor. Colton Herta just simply lost it, and before that, he had been faster than his teammate Alexander Rossi. They relayed that to the 27, and immediately Rossi picked up lap time. So you know, Townsend, sometimes when you're trying to pick up that last little 5%, to maybe catch a leader, that's when you lose it. Meanwhile, Joseph Newgard talking about the next stop coming up very quickly. Here's what they said on the radio. Your opinion between Sticker Black and Scuff Red, you got one? Sticker Black. First looking like. Sticker and Black. That, and that was the conversation. In. Yeah, Townsend, Sticker Blacks. So that was the conversation. Originally, the plan earlier today was to go with those scuffed red tires, and they have decided to go Sticker Blacks here for Joseph Newgarden. And once again, Tim Sendrick making the call 
very, very late to bring Joseph Newgarden to pit road. It worked last time for them to leapfrog right some folks. You see those primary tires going out. on. Newgarden's been very happy with the car. No changes to the front wing. You see that? We'll see if Newgarden here can gain some spots. Tim Sendrick said go so hard on these outlets. So they've got to be gambling on a yellow because that's a long way to go on a tank of fuel around here. They can do it. They can go 34 laps, but this puts Rossi and Scott Dixon in the danger zone right now. If there was a crash, say, with these two cars battling right here, they would be exposed. I've got to think we'll see Dixon coming to pit lane this lap Full to protect. Sure. Full sure. I've got to think Rossi's going to make the next move, and I believe he does has come in the, is coming in the pits this lap because you cannot allow yourself to for have it go yellow. Dixon's and here he two. is. Look, here comes Rossi. Oh, they Rossi are both, and Dixon. both covering the move by Tim Sindrick. Both guys are pitting. Compare pit stops here. Nice big lead for Rossi, so they don't need anything fancy. Dixon would like a nice fast pit stop, maybe have an opportunity to get by Joseph Newgarden as they both Position leave. Is fine. This blend here is so challenging at St. Petersburg. Let's see where they uh, cycle back out. Newgarden and Dixon, right there, here. Goes, one right there here. goes Newgarden in the black and white Hitachi. There goes Dixon, Whoa. firing right out at speed. Got to be so careful on cold tires when you come out at speed there. You're going way faster than you would be normally through that corner, and you're on cold tires. And has a clear view of his championship rival, Joseph Newgarden. That's Renus VK behind, the newly crowned Rookie of the Year, and recently signed re-signed with Ed Carpenter Racing. So he has his sophomore season next year with ECR. So James Hinchcliffe now is the leader, followed by Herta, who's now closed the gap to Hinchcliffe. He spun and then now has closed it back down to one second. So Herta now is really charging to try to get back towards the lead. But they have a seven second deficit before that pit stop by Rossi. And Rossi's stuck in a little bit of traffic right now. He has cleared Marcus Erickson. There's Rossi, there's Erickson. Up ahead, Rossi still has Askew and his teammate Ryan Hunter Ray. So, how much time He's did hustling. Rossi lose in traffic on that exchange? He's hustling too. He's had it step out there. He's got to hustle. You can't afford to sit, sit around behind guys. You'll lose too much time and give the opportunity for Hinchcliffe and Herder to jump ahead of them. Well, as they stay out on hot tires. So he's saying, keep pushing, keep pushing. Hinch is coming in. So Hinch pits, Colton Herta stays out. So this is going to be There's an ready battle on green flag out and in laps for that probably second position, Kevin. So a month ago, James Hinchley thought his part-time season was over. Now he's got a chance to win a race, certainly to finish on the podium. Will staying out longer help him all close that gap to Alexander Rossi. Primary Firestones for the last stint for James Hinchcliffe. That very memorable victory in the Go Daddy colored car uh, and livery car. There goes Alexander Rossi, so easily ahead of James Hinchcliffe. Look to the right, there's oh, Hinch. Perfect. He gets launched in the Gamebridge Honda. I no, see perfect there. because yeah. he's got clean air in front of him. No traffic to mess with the outlap. That's exactly what he needed to try to close the gap on Alexander Rossi. Herta will be the next car to come in. We'll see if he rips off a really quick in lap and can do the overcut on James Hinchcliffe. James has got to have a good outlap. And as we look here, Fox, he's going to, Fox, here he comes. Whoa, gets it sideways coming off the corner. Maximizing every ounce of speed. That's going to make the no difference. Changes. No changes, he calls. No changes, wide open pit lane down here. Let's hit the marks. And you see the big decal on the side there on the engine cover, HPD. That represents Honda Performance Development. Honda is looking good to win the manufacturer's battle here today. Of course, Honda and Chevrolet. Originally, Colton Herta was supposed to pit the lap before with his teammate James Hinchcliffe. They waited one more lap. We'll see where he lands here. An outstanding stop for the 88 team. Primary tires. We'll see where Colton blends out with everybody else. But a terrific close. stop by oh, his he's team. got him. He got him. There's Hinchcliffe right behind him. A fairway. Oh, oh Rossi. Rossi. Alexander Rossi crashes in the fast chicane. That is such a dangerous spot right there. The guy who has led 61 laps today has just thrown it away. He got, he got out into the marbles. He uh, highlight the black section. We see his dad on one of the one of the ISO monitors. 
He can't believe it. There's his dad, Peter Rossi. He had his hands on his head. It looked like he got into the marbles, Townsend, and he lost the rear and spun it towards the inside and hit the inside wall. Strange time to have that accident because he was already out for a couple of laps since the pit stop. So you have to think he had tire pressure, tire temperature. And All like of. Will Power, Alexander Rossi can't believe a win has just disappeared. Oh, Look at that. In the oh. marbles, loses the rear, and it goes for the inside. Oh, bang, into the, in the nose and the wall and the rear, and it's game over, day done. And here comes Herder arriving on the scene to say, I can't believe what I'm seeing. There's nothing worse than that to go into an off season. So he's in a little bit of traffic here and just gets those marbles and it's over. We did not expect that and Peter Rossi's yeah. disbelief as well. A guy who has never missed one of his son's races anywhere in the world has seen a lot, but he didn't expect to see that today. And just look at, I mean, it's like a Oreo cookie pie over here with the number of marbles. This restart is gonna be crazy. And once again, it puts Scott Dixon in the danger zone championship wise. Paul, that is, uh, those are actual rubber marbles. <laughs> yeah. You fall over just walking on those things. Yeah, it's like, literally, it's like driving on marbles. When you get out in those, you have zero grip. You have zero adhesion to the road, and uh, Rossi right there, you can see arms crossed. He just can't believe it. He's in shock. He can see he can see the skid marks, Kevin. He's looking back at it. He just. And those that have not stopped yet, their race is ruined, and Graham Rahal, the current leader, they had tires out. They were already planning to pit, so they missed it by whatever, 15 or 20 seconds, and they had done a really good job on strategy. Stayed out longest for the first stop, moved from 17th to 8th, I think they were positioned to maybe be able to challenge for a top five or so, and now he's going to go all the way back to the end of the line, they were. along with Ryan Hunter Ray, Oliver Askew, and a few others. But James Hinchcliffe is going to take over uh, as the no, no Herta's Herta. in front of him. Herta, Herta got in front of him, so Herta and Hinchcliffe still going at it. It'll be Herta Hinchcliffe below pitted on 51, so he's going to have to stop. That'll put Newgarden back up into third with a chance to make a move on the restart for the win and a chance for Scott Dixon to have trouble. So even though this guy overshot the, the turn and had to spit flick spin and come back around and rejoin uh, by staying out, doing that overcut, as Paul said, worked out with his teammate crashing out of the race, this 20-year-old whiz in just his second full year of IndyCar potentially win again and everywhere he has won it's been a different circuit each time for Colton Herter as he continues to just rack up amazing early career numbers he was beaten to the Indy Lights title by another guy in this race who was his teammate at the time that's Pato Award but since coming to IndyCars boy it swung back his way as far as pole positions and race wins it's got to be so stressful for the 19 Paul every time these yellows come out it is so treacherous on the restarts, it just ramps up the chance for something to go wrong. Scott Dixon has navigated that like the five-time champion he has, uh, that he is, and yeah. stayed out of trouble. But this is just, he must be rolling his eyes inside that helmet thinking, it'll not be, another restart. It'll be interesting to see if IndyCar takes the opportunity to, to take sweep. a sweeper. Or I see the, the jet drying truck out there now, so they're gonna attempt to blow some of this rubber off the track and get it away from the line. But, um, you know, it's treacherous. These street races, the marbles and soft tires, as we see all these guys are, that missed that window, Kevin, coming in for a stop. So we see Ryan Hunter Ray, Oliver Askew needing to pit. He's going to scuff Reds, and Graham Rahal has his chance at a good day go away. And as mentioned earlier, he's on baby watch. Kathy Lauterbach has the cell phone, but he's staying no matter what going on. She's the PR representative. You see Ryan Hunter Ray also. Good final stop for Graham Ray Hall. We'll get back home on a, a charter tonight to be with his wife Courtney as quick as we can. And Ray Hall and Hunter Ray are going to race off pit road, and Hunter Ray wins that one. Great aerial shot with thanks to Geico as we welcome you back to the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Pete. The green and white car on the right hand side of your screen is Andretti Harding. Steinbrenner Autosport driver. Yes, that's the Steinbrenner. It's George IV as far as, uh, yes, if you're thinking, oh, we were talking Major League Baseball before. Yes, that is Yankee Steinbrenner, George IV. 
and his good friend Carlton Herder, his driver, ready to go, let's go. Here in St. Pete, Herder and then Hinchcliffe popping out and having a look is Alex Pelot. Oh, Pelot is off sequence, big lock up from Hinch. Hinch had a really good restart, squares him oh, up. Boy. I think he's gonna get him here, now he backs it off. These guys are tiptoeing on cold tires with the marbles. It looks like they've blown off that section. See, a lot of the marbles are gone now, but a lot of action on cold tires. Look at Newgarden trying to get around Pelot. Big here. move, big move here. Graham Rahal oh. on the inside. No, Takuma Sato. Sato. Sato makes contact and, and gives Marco a flat tire. He hit his rear tire and flattened it immediately. And that is implications for the leader circle money. That is huge implications. Marco Andretti had been up to seventh. And on track to secure that million dollar bonus and now finds himself in the tires. Yeah, Sato came flying down the inside, locked up, barely made contact, it looked like, with Marco's inside tire. It cut that tire, I think, and then he, the, he got to the next corner and it immediately went around on him. Looks like they'll be able to refire. If they can get him out of that banner and he doesn't have any damage, he has to stay on the lead lap. They've got about 40 seconds to get him going. He knows this is critical. Big thanks to the AMR safety team for the brilliant job they've done again. Oh, damage for Hinch, looks like. Yeah, did that happen? He made contact uh, at the start. Us, you got front he wing. made contact at the back of uh, at the back of Colton Herter's car. Uh, I in don't the know, Paul. Zone. Was that on the brake zone? Yes. I don't think they touched that I hard. Just take it easy. That thing's hanging underneath the front wing, hanging underneath the front. Yeah, just gonna, creep it back in here. It'll get under that tire and then go under the under the bottom of the car, and you won't have any steering. So you got to be careful that doesn't get go completely underneath. But Let's have a look what happened with all of this. Watch, watch Sato here. Down the inside, gets one car. Marco doesn't know he's there, touches him. Cuts his right rear gets, tire. See, it's immediately flat, and he loses it. Boom. Marco had no chance. No chance. Tire's down. It's off the rim already. So those front wing end plates do a pretty nasty job of, uh, of cutting the tires. This is James Hinchcliffe. His wing's fine at this point, Paul. Oh. Just lost. Uh, did I don't he know have what a, did there? He he have, no, he's going to drive. Oh, oh, oh. He drove right into the side. Was that Jack Harvey? Yeah, he just he's just spun it on his own on in the marbles on cold tires. And oh then my gosh. this is just this is more bizarre than than the Tiger King. Oh, what a, dis <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> Oh, no doubt about that. <laughs> this I'm, is representative I'm, of 2020, that's I'm, for sure. I'm scanning the grandstands for Joe Exotic right now. Let's 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 walk through this again. He's just he's just frantic to get it turned around. There's Dixon, and there's lose, BK. Not lose positions. There's Harvey. Bang. He just mistimed it as Harvey was trying to woe up. What a disaster for the Andretti team, Marty. Two cars in the span of about five minutes. Boy, what, a, what a crazy day. Townsend, Alexander Rossi out of the race. The dominant car led 61 laps. What happened, Alexander? Just uh, just lost in turn three, man. It's um, It's been tough all weekend. It's just a, a human error. So it's um, hugely unfortunate. I think the 27 automation Andretti Honda guys um, were phenomenal. Andretti Autosport was phenomenal all weekend. And, Sucks, man. This is it's the first time it's happened to me to crash from the lead. So um, I don't really know what to say other than sorry to the boys, and we'll come back next year. You had been talking about the marbles. Everybody had been talking about the marbles. How treacherous was it out there? Yeah, it was hard, man, um, on the restarts and such. That wasn't what caught us out there. It just kind of bumped the wrong way, I guess, and um, couldn't save it. All right, Alexander Rossi out of it here today, but you know he had a terrific car and wanted to win this race. But boy, the complexion of this race has changed so much, guys. And guess who's now in second? Joseph Newgarden. Yeah. Wow. Marco Andretti oh, out of the no. car now. No, look at all these cars stacked up Listen, in the runoff area. He's begging. Guys, I'm getting in. Fire me up. He's, he's pleading. Uh, he's lost a lap, lap now or two, so the advantage now goes to Bourdais. Bourdais went off sequence, put himself behind Andretti. Marco's absolutely furious. And Paul, you're talking about the advantage to secure 22nd in the championship points, which again 
is worth roughly a million dollars for one of these teams. Marco Andretti, Connor Daly, and Bourdais all on that bubble. Well, it's like having having it secured or saying go and find that money for the season. There's Jack, Jack Harvey. He got hit by James Hinchcliffe right up there in the top turn. We're hearing reports there are some raindrops what? falling here in St. Petersburg on pit lane. It's been oh sprinkling God. a little bit, guys. Not not significant. I was going to bring it up earlier, but yes, it is starting uh, to sprinkle here on pit road. Why don't we add something else to the mix? Why not? We've guys? had everything else, haven't we? It's your fault, Paul. You as soon as you mentioned Tiger King, it just went <laughs> crazy. Listen, these guys have hit everything but the helicopter. That's next. So I was just getting ready to say a moment ago that James Hinchcliffe was in a position to maybe be able to win the race, and and he's someone that doesn't have a job for next year. Now he goes from potentially winning the race to making a mistake. Two of them actually on here his own. Luckily for him, I asked him before, how much does today's performance matter as far as securing your ride next year? And he said, no, it doesn't. It's uh, it's uh, heading in the right direction. It's not signed yet, but I've been told just oh. go out and have fun. I already did what I needed to do to secure that leader circle money. And look at that big black cloud above us here. Paul, it's raining good sunshine now. and oh. a pretty steady light, steady big raindrops. Oh, oh my goodness. Luckily that the pavement right now is really hot you and thought the temperature is hot the sun's out i don't know if this rain will stick but it is going to make it greasy that's for sure Tiffy, if you thought the restarts were hard before <laughs> throw this into the mix and of course nobody will want to pit at this point for any reason and lose track position and there's one lap to go when the pace car reaches the timing line so herda oh boy you got your hands full oh he's got uh does not show any rain on the radar. We don't think it's going to go long or hard. Okay, voice of Brian Bonhart. You can see the big cloud here on the front stretch. That's where it's all coming from. This is one to go. This is the radar, the Happy. live radar at the moment. So it's just kind of a little pop-up shower. What well, Lee, I'll, um, I'll say these are big raindrops that are falling down on pit road, like a legit raindrop. So, and, the, and that's where the front stretch is. So uh, this is going to get interesting. How many more times can Scott Dixon roll his eyes? I know, I know. Scott Dixon now sixth, Newgarden in podium position. He needs to win this race. I'm seeing Wayne drops on our booth. So Alex Pillow is in second, but pitted on lap 51. So that's significantly earlier than everybody else. He will need to come again, even with all of this yellow. Uh, there we go, the big cloud above the circuit. This is like the, uh, you've heard of the Joker lap in Rallycross. This is the Joker cloud to mix things up as we see debris on the front stretch that will undoubtedly need to be cleared, I would think. Yeah, it's right in the middle of the straightaway. So that is uh, definitely, if you run over that, it could cut, cut a tire down, cause more drama. But we're going green. Oh, They're boy. leaving it out there. And that is right. Oh, that's. So the yeah, big, that's right in the middle of the front straightaway. The big painted lines on, on the runway. Uh, are hard enough to negotiate in the dry until they get enough rubber on them, but add in a little bit of rain on that paint as well, and you're on slick tires. Still plenty of sun here. I'm just looking out the booth. That big black cloud is above our, uh, our announce booth. Hopefully that's not representative. Still see the raindrops there as they warm their tires. It's sunny in turn one, but it has been raining on this side of the track. This is going to be fascinating. It's going to be crazy. Alex Pillow behind is the second car. There he is there for Dale Coyne racing with Team Go, the guaranteed rate Honda. But he's off sequence as far as his stop, so he's going to go for it. Colton Hurt will see the green. Pelot lights it up. Somebody dies for pit lane. That's Arenas VK. Pelot on the left-hand side of your screen. Joseph Newgarden in the mix. Championship hopeful. Here they come into the braking zone on those painted lines. Newgarden goes for Colton Herter. He's going for the wow. lead around the outside, and Newgarden gets it done. Two in one corner. Pelot made a fantastic restart, but Joseph Newgarden squared them all up, and now he's doing exactly what he needs to do. As Dixon is urgent now to work his way to the front. He's just moved up to fourth. Now he's going for third. Three cars contact just behind Scott Dixon. He manages to squeak by once again. Meanwhile, Newgarden came in having to win, and he's on his way to winning. This is going to be cool down the stretch for Scott, the championship. Scott Dixon's going to make a move here on Colton Herta. He got a good drive off the corner, but Scott Dixon, all he needs to do now is finish inside the top nine. Wow. 
just stay there, stay put. It was Sebastian Bourdais in the AJ Foyt racing number 14 collided with countryman Simon Pagenaud, but they ricocheted off each other and they were able to keep going. Oh. This is Oliver Askew, turn 10. There'll be another yellow. Has to be, car stalled. Dead quiet. Everybody, can you get reverse? Can't get reverse if the engine isn't running. There's the full course caution. I can't tell you how remarkable it is that Dixon from mid-pack has survived all of these restarts with no contact, no damage, and now finds himself in third. The escape artist. Been a wonderful, been a wonderful, wonderful afternoon for him. But how you've got to admire the aggression of Newgarden getting that done. An incredible performance from this man just to go on maximum attack on championship day to try and keep his hopes alive of a third NTT IndyCar Series and then title. And see it, Diff. 16 points now the difference between Nixon and Newgarden. Newgarden doing everything he needs to do to pull this off, especially with a sly little move like this. And this is the Children's Miracle Network moment of the race. Why wouldn't it be? Polo and Herder, Newgarden steps back and assesses the situation. Paul and says, excuse me, coming through, going to the lead. I'm trying to win a championship. He absolutely timed that to perfection. He just let those guys kind of hold, hold themselves up and squared the corner up and got the drive off the corner. Watch this, he just squares it up, straight lines it, and gets Polo, but Dixon also saw that move and says, I gotta make some moves now, and jumped his way up on into podium position. Ah, uh, it was Sato and Askew. This Geico aerial shot is featuring the Honda pace car. The reason why, just get ready for it, folks. Everything has happened today that could. Oriel Servia driving the pace car, we believe, is low on fuel. I think, I think Joe Exotica's behind the wheel <laughs> of that thing. So Newgarden apparently is going to control the field. How about, how about handing the advantage to the leader as the pace car comes in? Watch this on your right-hand side. IndyCar official is going to point him that way. Serbia carries on. I'm not sure if he knew where the fuel was. Well, that car doesn't run on, on uh, ethanol. It's got to go get gasoline, so there's nothing in the pit lane for him. You might as well just take one of the generators on pit lane and try to <laughs> dump it in the tank. Maybe Marco Andretti's or somebody else that's out. Going green next time. Wow. That's the voice of Tim Sindrick, Team Penske president. And this is a nice advantage for Newgarden to be able to clean his tires at a pace he likes as now we're on board with Newgarden. Down in one tiptoeing their way through as Lee Diffie mentioned and he just he just puts on a master stroke move to square things up like Paul talked about hang on through that one section and Dixon's watching all of this saying just stay stay clean stay clean yeah, but watch this one once he makes that move he kind of does the same move as Newgarden and says oh I got I got to get more aggressive now and then squares this one up here he made a nice move on Pato Award there yeah now he's making a move on Herta, backs out of it. Thought and about it there, and the long. collision happens behind him right here is yeah. where Bordet and Pagano got together. To your point, T-Bell, he, uh, he was so close to that. Dixon knows he just needs to keep, if he can see Newgarden, he's good. Marty? And in between Scott Dixon and Joseph Newgarden is Colton Herta. And on that restart, he said, how many overboosts are going to cost us today? So they changed the mapping coming to the green this time, hoping it doesn't cause their fourth overboost of the day. But that's why he lost the lead. And Newgarden now up front where he needs to be. Look at Herta. Look at Herta all over the gearbox of that Hitachi Chevrolet. Newgarden runs a little wide there as he controls the field. He's struggling for traction as they come to the green. 16 laps to go as they cross the line here and that Andretti Autosport driver is shadowing him. Here comes Pato Award on the inside of Dixon. Pato makes a really nice move down the inside. He's going to have a look at Herta down the straightaway, but he gets uh, uh, Dixon gets shuffled back by the McLaren SP driver. you got to think if you're racing Scott Dixon right oh. now for position, he's going to give you a wide berth as Pato Award goes inside Colton Herta. He's old teammate. Contact. His old teammate, and he gets him for second. Now, remember, O'Ward has never won an IndyCar race. He is desperate to do it for Arrow McLaren SP, and this is his biggest opportunity. Oh, he's on the move now. If he can get a good drive off this corner, get on the push to pass, he's got gets a little bit of wheel spin there. 
Pato Award is on the charge, wants that first win. He's this tired. Guy, he's tired of seeing Colton Herta win races. Well, for everybody involved in the organization, for Sam Schmidt and Rick oh. Peterson and Zach Brown, they love this guy. They have re-signed him for the 2021 season, and why wouldn't you? The 21-year-old Mexican has shown just oh. how talented he is. Oh, now he's hassling the racing wow. champion. This is it. This is it right oh, here. God. What a corner available. he had. What a final corner. What a great run. Here he comes. Under brakes. Under brakes. Can he do it in no. one? No. Deep on the brakes for Newgarden. He gets in there really deep, but he, he squares him up. He might have a shot coming off the corner here. Meanwhile, Sebastian Bourdais is all over Scott Dixon. Further back. Newgarden here comes Award. Going. He's got to go for it if he wants that win. Newgarden also. Oh. Herta goes in the tires. That puts Dixon on the podium, the, the uh, provisional podium. Second time that's happened this race for Colton Herta, Herta in that corner. Huge break for Dixon. Dixon has clean air now. 15 laps to go here in St. Pete for Pato Award right there Let's in the orange it. and black Aaron McLaren Chevrolet. Let's he led at Road America only to see the win go away when Felix Rosenquist got him late in the race. An award has almost double the amount of push to pass that Joseph Newgarden has, and he knows Joseph Newgarden knows his spot of where he has to win this race to have a shot to win the championship. I talked to Gilles DeFerrin, the leader of this team, for Pato Award, and he said he has done everything we've asked him to do this year. We need him to take that next step. We have led laps. We finished on the podium. That next step, converting that to wins, he can make it happen today, guys. It's all or nothing for Newgarden. He knows he has to win. It's win or crash. It doesn't matter. Matter. The longer this goes, that Newgarden can stay in front. I think Newgarden will settle in, get those tires up to temp, and it'll be harder and harder, Townsend, for Pato to get by. I think it's advantage right now, Pato, cold tires. Well, he's well, got the pass too, Townsend. He's had such a good drive off the final corner onto the long front straightaway, but Newgarden with 11 seconds left, Award with 24, Dixon at 47, and Bourdais with 61. So as they sequence back, the car's in front at a disadvantage. They're exposed on push to pass. We'll see if Award can get another great exit here off the final corner. This young man here has won at this track in Indy Lights. That was two years ago when he was the Indy Lights champion. Last year was kind of a weird left. year. He did the first seven races, and then there was a budget issue with the team. But he'd done enough in those first seven races to gain the attention of Dr. Helmut Marco within the Red Bull racing program. He said, listen, we're going to sign you up. There might be a potential opportunity for you to come to Formula One, maybe do some FP1 free practice ones on Fridays. Uh, he did one Formula Two weekend. Then he went to Japan to do the Super Formula. Things didn't work out with Red Bull, and he got signed by Zach Brown, Sam Schmidt, Rick Peterson, the whole gang to be one of two young drivers in Aaron McLaren SP. It's McLaren's first full-time involvement in IndyCar since 1979, and it has been a fabulous season for this team, thanks to this guy and some hard-working crew. You can try gray six for exit of 14 wheel spin. So gray six, exit of turn 14, wheel spin. That probably is doing a little bit of torque smoothing to the ECU, New the Garden way the power comes on. Push the pass. Dixon behind has That's 47. That's a engineer given the information on how many seconds Newgarden has of push to pass left. Chevy one, two with a Honda in third. Like I said, Newgarden now has got the tires up to temp. He's settled in, gotten into his rhythm. Townsend, when he, when he gets up front, he's a difficult guy to beat. That was the voice of Taylor Kale, team manager and strategist for award, giving critical information. Kevin, What's going on? Take a look at Sebastian Bourdais and where he's at right now. He doesn't seem that strange, start seventh and run fourth right now, but he was most, and the team was most concerned about that leader circle, the revenue sharing program of a million dollars, and they were gonna cover anything that the 20 or the 98 did, and once that felt good, then they would start the race. Well, that's settled because those cars have had issues, not on the lead lap or out, so he's going after it. He's won two times here. Mostly, this is by far the best performance for the A.J. Foyt team this year as they try to build to for next year, Marty. 
second and burn. Pat Here's the fastest car on the racetrack right have now. Made, or second, they have made him aware that not only is the win right in front of him, but if he can pass Joseph Newgarden, guys, we've talked about this third place in the championship standings. Guess who would finish third if he wins this race? Pato Award. They've made him aware that, hey, there's more than just the win ahead of you. It's third place in the season-long championship standings. So a lot to fight for for Pato Award. Well, let's think about it from a team perspective. Arrow McLaren SP, if they can get third in the championship, boys, they're behind Penske and Ganassi. That is huge. It's only a three-point gap right now from Colton Herta to Pato Award. So the urgency now is on for him to try to get this first win and try to secure that top three in the championship. Meanwhile, we've got Alex Pelot running in, in, in fifth. That would be a huge way for that young rookie to finish the season. However, he last pitted on lap Eight, 51 with all ten of the cautions. Go. I don't know if it'll be enough for Pelot to make it to the finish. He'd have to be getting excellent mileage, not only under yellow, but right now. And ahead of him is Sebastian Bourdais. What a tremendous run for AJ Foyt Racing on street circuit. Bourdais has clearly had an impact, done a nice job since returning. The, 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 uh, his first weekend back at the Harvest Grand Prix weekend, it kind of highlighted his time out of the car. And even James Hinchcliffe said that. When you're out of the car, I struggled as well. Sebastian did. Elio Castro Nevis came back. It was a difficult transition back into the car. But now he's found his feet. And he's obviously very comfortable being a multi-time winner here on these streets where he and his young family call home. He says he's got a lot of work to do for next year to get ready, but he's got his off-season plans pretty much in place. He's going to run the 24 hours of Daytona. He's going to finish off this season in IMSA and be ready for a 2021 attack with Foyt Racing, get him back up front. So 10 laps to go for Joseph Newgarden. Nine, make it nine, pardon me. Nine to go, he's done everything, T-Bell, everything that could be asked of him. He can't do any more than this. It's been a perfect drive for Joseph Newgarden, staying out of trouble, making the right call on tire selection, and putting the pace together when it counts. The only thing that he hasn't had is lady luck or lady bad luck for Scott Dixon. Meanwhile, Dixon has done absolutely everything right also. He certainly shadowed Newgarden all the way. Every time Newgarden made a move, Dixon made a move to follow. So Dixon as well doing everything right today that he needs to do to get his sixth championship as things are starting to wind down. But we've seen wild, crazy moments in this race, guys. And with nine laps to le left, it just seems like anything could happen. You've seen leaders go off on their own in break zones or in fast corners with the marbles. It's going to take a steady hand on the tiller here for both Newgarden and Dixon to nurse these Indy cars home. And can, can we all take a step back, right, while we ride on board the PNC Bank Honda? Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture and the big storyline that's at play right here involving this 40-year-old Kiwi. This guy wasn't even born when the gentleman on the left, AJ Foyt, won his sixth championship. That was 45 years ago. AJ is the only one in the history of IndyCar to win six, and then he went on to win a seventh. So for Dixon to be in that rarefied air, that's what's at stake here over these closing eight laps. An incredible accomplishment if Dixon does it, if he stays where he does now for another eight laps. The way he's been driving at age 40 suggests he can do this for another 20 years at this level. He is every bit as fast, every bit as competitive, plus all of the knowledge of 20 years of IndyCar Seven racing. Seven more good laps here. For those of you turning on, just check out MotoGP. Uh, it will be coming up at the conclusion of this race. We're going to finish off this 2020 NTT IndyCar season. And look at that. There's some interesting numbers, fellas, on the road to their respective six championships if Dixon stays where he is for another seven laps. Amazing statistics for both of those drivers, two of the best in the business. But another guy who's having a great day today, too, was another Florida boy, Ryan Hunter Ray, has moved up from the back of the grid up into the top six. So we haven't seen Florida much of him all day. Behind. There he is right there in the DHL car, their track sponsor here. So a great run for this guy who's from Florida. Let me let me remind you that 
Hunter Ray in P6. That would be the highest finishing Andretti car, which is crazy to think about when you consider Colton Herta, Alexander Rossi, James Hinchcliffe, Jack Harvey, all those cars that have been running up front all day, and it's been the steady hand of Hunter Ray bringing it home as Pillow goes to the pits and puts Hunter Ray into the top five. Can't make it. And Kimball now with A.J. Foyt jumps up to eighth. So both of Foyt's cars this weekend in the top ten. That's a huge effort. Alex Blow did his best. He tried to save as much fuel as he could, but he last hit it on lap 51. He was trying to go basically half the race on, uh, on one load of fuel. So he, he can run well. He enjoyed some time up front. So he gets topped up enough to finish it off for these final six laps of the 2020 season. Let's hope we see this 23-year-old uh, Spaniard back next year. He's a really good talent to have in the NTT IndyCar Series. And Ward's now four seconds behind Joseph Newgarden. He can't do anything about the Hitachi Chevrolet driver. Dixon's got a Ward in his sights pretty nicely here, but there's no reason to challenge there. Dixon's doing everything he needs to do over these Ford closing you. five laps. Five laps. Uh, you can't let your guard down, Townsend. You've got to concentrate. This track has really bitten a lot of drivers today, top-level drivers, especially in this section. So you've got to thread the needle and be careful so you can't afford to make a mistake. No doubt. And the pressure has to be on with Dixon knowing and seeing Newgarden lead this race. That was exactly the scenario that was sort of framed up as a, as a must-do for Newgard. Newgard, you've got to win. And Dixon, if he wins, you've got to keep it in the top 10. Hey, guys, meanwhile, up front, Joseph Newgard. I can't imagine the emotion he must feel right now, Townsend. I mean, they came in knowing we have to win the race. Honestly, in practice yesterday, probably did not have the car to win this race. Qualified eighth. They were able to leapfrog their way up through the field to get the lead. And now it looks like they're going to get back-to-back -back wins here at St. Pete. And you want to celebrate that, right? But you also know you're not going to win the championship. But the way that Joseph Newgarden, this entire team, Penske group, has closed the season, you got to feel good about it, especially knowing the first race of 2021 right back here at St. Pete. It's not going to be a title today. It's going to be a win. It's going to feel like a little bit of a hollow win, I would assume, for Team Penske. And there's going to be this amazing uh, pattern that has formed over the past few years here continue, and that is back-to-back -back winners. Juan Pablo Montoya did it in 2015-2016. Bourdais did it in 2017-2018. Newgarden is the defending race winner. So if he wins again, that double win sequence continues. Tell you what, he's pushing hard. His last lap was a 101.3. Oh, Ward at a 102.0. So he's pushing it to the limit right now, even though he's got a big lead. Not leaving anything on the table, Townsend. Not at all, and I think this just emphasizes how strong Team Penske is over a full stint on the harder black tires. I'm sure it's tough for Will Power to watch because he had that car, he had that lead early on and was just a victim to uh, you know the, the tough track conditions today, got off in an uncharacteristic mistake, but for Newgarden, this has got to feel great except for the fact that it right now just won't be enough to close the championship. Jo Joseph is going to be a massive ambassador for the uh, street race in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. You'll see that next year in the 2021 championship on August the 8th. On the streets of Nashville, there's a lot of excitement. Our statistician, Russ Thompson, lives in Nashville, Tennessee, so there's a lovely buzz around town about it. And so, Joseph, you will see him involved more and more in the promotion of that first time event. You know what else I can't help but thinking about? Scott Dixon for Chip Ganassi. Chip Ganassi Racing's 30th anniversary season this season. We you think about the caliber of the drivers who have represented Chip Ganassi, we think about Alex Zanardi in his comeback and his recovery after that horrendous accident. We wish you well, Alex. You think about Jimmy Vassa, Mike Landretti, Joe for, for Chip. Dario Franchitti won championships. But this man here is the longest tenured driver for Chip and the most successful. And when you think about the fact that when we come back in March, Chip Ganassi Racing and Scott Dixon will have a new member of the team, NASCAR superstar Jimmy Johnson, lining up to try his luck at IndyCar Racing. I think he's still here today, and I'm sure he's watching and mighty impressed with the drive that Dixon's put on to not only navigate the chaos, 
but potentially looks like here end up on the podium to close out a six championship. Big, big question marks on who is going to be the second teammate to Scott Dixon. We are sure it's going to be a superstar driver because that's what Chip likes. But we're winding this thing down. Don't forget NASCAR Texas is coming on. Yeah, another big race tonight. But last lap for Newgarden was his fastest lap of the race. One to go. The white flag is displayed. Less than two miles to go for Joseph Newgarden for his here. fourth victory on the season. For Pato Award, it will be his fourth podium if he stays where he is. But for this man here in the PNC Bank Honda, Chip, uh, rather Scott Dixon for Chip Ganassi Racing, he is less than two miles from a sixth IndyCar Championship. Incredible. He was in the right place at the right time. He avoided several large collisions. There's been a lot of crashes today. The attrition rate has been incredibly high, but this guy here has been spot on. Didn't qualify well yesterday. Again, started today's race in 12th. But for this young man who left his home in New Zealand, came to the United States in 1999, the past 21 years have been fantastic. He is synonymous with victory. Joseph Newgarden is also synonymous with victory. He did everything we could have this year. Newgarden Good job. did everything he had to, but Scott Dixon is a six-time IndyCar champion. How about that? He does it on a track where he's never been victorious. That doesn't champion, matter. He's the champ. I never doubted it, never doubted it. Not with you guys, what a team. Thank you all so much, boys, girls, everybody. Well done, well done. This is all you guys, thank you. And that sums up who Scott Dixon is. A gracious champion, grateful for the team behind him. And he is in a very special place in the history of this sport. Just a reminder for those of you turning on to watch MotoGP, that is coming up as soon as we are done here shortly. And then Football Night in America leading into Sunday Night Football Seahawks and Cardinals. That's at 8.20. Let's go down and celebrate with the new six-time champ, Marty. Scott Dixon in his 20th season, 40 years old this year, showing no signs of slowing down. A sixth IndyCar title for Scott Dixon and Chip Ganassi Racing. And he did it in very non Scott Dixon like fashion coming on early in the season normally known to kind of turn it on at the end of the season. And I agree with what Dario Franchitti said. What's going to make Scott great is his drive. He's exceptional when it comes to that. And I think everybody wants to know Scott where is your fountain of youth because at 40 years old I think you might agree as Joseph Newgarden comes in. For the handshake classy move there Newgarden winning the race. Where's that fountain of youth, Scott? Because at 40, I think you might agree, this might have been one of your best seasons ever. Six times now, you're an IndyCar champion. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It definitely started that way, but uh, it's, it's all the team. You know, I can't thank everybody on this uh, team enough. Obviously, Chip at the helm, Mike and Barry, uh, and everybody involved. Obviously, Honda, so proud to be powered by Honda. And what they've been, been able to pull out this year, even the deficit that we had going into Indy previous years, you know, they, they nailed it. So. Uh, Big thanks to everybody, my family. I'm glad uh, my girls are here. Emma's somewhere. Unfortunately, <laughs> Kit's not here, but uh, you know it's a big shame that he won't be here. But I uh, can't thank everybody enough. PNC Bank. Two out of three years. That's pretty good going. Yeah, you told me in the off season, as everyone cheers back there, you guys had some very tough conversations, Scott. How did those tough conversations lead you to this moment and make this team better? Uh, you know, it's it's never just one thing or one person, and and you know, for me. It's really about the team effort. You know, we had a lot of changes in the off season. Yeah. Here comes the boss, Chip Ganassi. So it's, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I seem to sleep fine. I don't know what everybody was worried about. No, it's, uh, it definitely got pretty close there. You know, credit to, to Joseph and uh, Team Pinsky. Um, you know, they, they drove uh, the last part of the season flawlessly and, and so many points. So it was pretty awesome to, to race them again. And we know next year is going to be the same. But uh, huge thanks to everybody again on the team. Now we're going to have a beer. Let's let the girls and Emma in here. Emma, come on in. 
She's your driving force back at home. How sweet. Now do you allow yourself, I know you didn't want to talk about it till after this was over, do you now allow yourself to think about a seventh title and catching A.J. Foyt? Well, six is good, seven sounds better. That's obviously <laughs> going to be the goal, but, uh, you know, it's tough. As you can see from the competition, you know, uh, even if you miss it a little bit in qualifying, we had some problems this weekend and just couldn't piece it together. But uh, credit again to the team and being able to pull ourselves out of that hole and just stay consistent and, and just have a smooth race, and that's all we did. Definitely had the speed when we needed to push, but, uh, you know, Credit to uh, Joseph. He drove a hell of a race there and put us under a lot of pressure. The Astor Cup awaits you. We're going to go talk to Joseph Newgarden. Congratulations, though, to Scott Dixon, a six-time IndyCar champion. Kevin? And he takes the title away from two-time champion Joseph Newgarden. You did everything you could do. You won four times this year. Great season. But I'm wondering, what are the emotions like in a situation like this? Well, it's definitely bittersweet. You know, um, first off, congrats to Scott and all his guys and his crew. Um, you know, it's big, it's big time to win six championships, so I'm sure they're thrilled. They were a great component or a competitor, and, you know, like I said, it's bittersweet. I think on, on one hand, I don't really know what I'd do different this year. You know, I don't know what I'd ask my guys to do different. They were flawless, fastest in the pits all year long. They were awarded earlier this weekend by Firestone, so I'm extremely proud to drive for my team, and not just our car, but all the teams combined, all the engineers, all the mechanics. We have an incredible crew that puts in a lot of work, and you know, we just came up short. That's all it is. We weren't good enough. Um, we'll reset. We'll hit them harder next year. And uh, I, I promise you we'll be in the fight. This crew can be in the fight every year. And so I have confidence we'll come back. So thank you to Hitachi, Team Chevy. You know, Team Chevy was the, the engine to beat today, and I think all year long. So big credit to them. Uh, just a little short on points, but we'll come back hitting harder next year. Going from eighth to the win on straightforward strategy is pretty impressive. And I'm wondering what you thought of what was going on around you and in front of you at times, all the chaos. Well, I mean, no doubt we didn't need a full green race. Um, so that played into our favor today. You know, uh, we definitely had the flow of the race that we needed, but, we, you know, it wasn't anything odd that gave us a, hey, no, look at this guy. Pato Award Had a good in. fight with him. It's one of the futures of IndyCar. I mean, he's already, you know, a star in IndyCar, so I don't want to say the future. Uh, I'm a huge Pato fan, so it was fun to race him. He, He's driven me so clean, and even when it was very difficult at the end of that race, all the pickup on the tires was really tough to clean off. He was just a great competitor, so I really have enjoyed driving against him. But um, yeah, we had a you know, solid day. We needed to be fairly quick. I think we had a, a fairly quick car, and uh, we just had to make some moves. That's all we could do to try and get to the front. So we outlasted everybody and you know, did what we needed to do. Just We knew coming into this that fate wasn't in our own hands. We knew that we weren't gonna be able to decide things. So we just did what we could and hoped for the best. Congratulations on a great year. We'll see you back here in March of 2021. Marty, back over to you. Well, Kevin, Scott Dixon getting some high fives from the team, but he, in a moment, will have the official presentation, but we'll let him get up here with the Astor Cup with uh, Mark Miles, the president and CEO of Penske Entertainment, and also David Croxville, the executive vice president and chief financial officer of NTT Data Services. And Scott will get to take home his sixth Astor Cup today. And uh, guys, Mark, I'll let you hand the trophy over to Mr. Dixon and Scott going to be able to celebrate with another Astra Cup here in 2020 and what a season it was for Scott Dixon and Chip Ganassi Racing that's a nice little prize to get to take home isn't it Lee fantastic fantastic he knows that feeling but to do it six times is just incredible and to have the top two in the championship they've been locked together for so long in this championship about laps completed and their stats have been so similar but in the end they finish 16 points apart in favor of dixon colton herder by the way did do enough to hang on to third in the championship over his old teammate and there is the remainder of the points on what was just a crazy day here in St. Petersburg to put a period on this 2020 NTT IndyCar Series Championship. Unbelievable. I want to remind you, and I know that some of you have turned on, MotoGP is coming up next. That's from Aragon in Spain. And later tonight, it's Sunday Night Football. That's at 8.20 p.m. Eastern, where the Seattle Seahawks will take on the Arizona Cardinals. Coverage begins with Football Night in America at 7 p.m. with Mike Tirico and the boys. Make sure you catch that. It's an exciting night ahead. NASCAR is happening right now in Texas. IndyCar is done for the season. You know, this was an improbable season, and at times it seemed impossible. 
but it happened with thanks to Roger Penske and everybody involved at IndyCar. And this guy proudly stands on top for a sixth time. Scott Dixon, one of the best ever in IndyCar. Congratulations.